if you are an investor, what should you be doing? What what should your focus be on some of these pockets and some of the stocks in news as well? Let's talk about all of that with Amit Jiswani, founder at Stallion Asset Management, joins us right now on the show. Amit, good having you. Thanks much for joining in. You know, I want to start off. It, it's almost impossible to try and figure out what to do with the market, so I'll skip that question entirely, frankly. Um, Long-term investing is great. People should probably try and do that. I want to start off with the big newsmakers, Amit, today for a change with you. Um, and talk about what do you think the big boys up to? Reliance Industries, they're trying to do these disruptions. The, the reason why I ask this is, for the first time, I'm seeing Reliance come out with uh, a proposition which is more product over pricing. The announcements yesterday are not price disruptive, but maybe product disruptive in terms of speed, in terms of cost per GB, in terms of uh, the free offerings that they are giving. And the stock is not buying any of that. The last few days has been very, very soft. What's happening here? Good morning, Neeraj. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, Reliance is part of our portfolio, so I won't be able to say a lot of things, but broadly, uh, uh, this looks like a good bet, Neeraj. There, there can be a, see, the game is deleverage. If this guy can deleverage as promised in 18 months, you're looking for a very long CAGR. Uh, this is like the Indian Amazon. This guy gets free cash flows from the refinery and petrochemical business and keeps investing in geo uh, geo and if you see the uh, for the next few years like five six seven years it is it becomes an unstoppable machine uh, of compounding so uh, this fiber is just the start i think the main game is going to be the data localization part uh, that's a hundred billion dollar opportunity if you see neeraj today uh, your amazon half of amazon's valuation 400 billion is because of aws if you look at uh, Microsoft. Microsoft has gone up from $40 to about $130. And that is majority backed on uh, these, these cloud servers or, uh, or Azure. Uh, Reliance is getting into that game. So once the Aramco deal is done and they can deleverage the fiber part as well, uh, I believe Reliance will create massive monopolies for the next 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, but if the deal doesn't go through, that's a risk that which is, this is a large risk which is there because two lakh crores of debt uh, is a massive debt that Reliance has. They have really stretched their balance sheet. So uh, the main trigger is not these fiber things because these are smaller investments to be honest. Uh, the most important thing is the deleverage part. Fiber will also do well. Uh, the pricing looks on the upper side for me. Uh, as you rightly said, the pricing is on the upper side. There is not a lot of discounting done here. In the geo side as well, uh, Neeraj, you will see the ARPUs going higher. You cannot have th uh, 30 GB data for 122 rupees. Now people are addicted. He already has 35 crore users. So if 35 crore users are paying 122 rupees, per month that broadly means 1400 rupees a, a year and and you get like 45 50000 crores of cash flows you will slowly see the arpu also going higher this guy has 85% of data market share in india so this is things are just getting started at reliance but uh, it, they have to deal leverage there's no second question and I, th I think that's a balanced view really a lot of opportunity um, a lot of uh, uh, compounding possibilities but subject to uh, the deleveraging that uh, Amit spoke about. Amit, uh, thanks, thanks for that answer. Amit, uh, have you looked at IT recently uh, closely because some of these stocks are trading at 52 week highs, at least Infosys and TCSR. Tech Mahindra saying that they won the largest deal win, almost the largest deal win ever. Any thoughts here on Tech Mahindra specifically and on large cap IT in general? IT looks good, so we don't track IT very closely, Neeraj. We stick to consumer technology, consumer financials, and consumer stocks. That's 95% of our portfolio. But we do own one stock called LTTS in our portfolio. This guy is a, uh, the leader in the ERD space, so, uh, and you have a uh, smart management there running the show. So that's our only bet there, but we don't have any more exposure to IT. But we are very positive on the dollar going higher. The rupee is just not correcting below 69. Technically, uh, the, the, bull, the long term bull market of dollar against the rupee continues. So, slowly and steadily, you will see. So, 74 is one level of, for the USD INR. Uh, if that gets crossed, you'll see 80 very soon on the USD INR. 
Wow. And, but, well, that should be, if, if not fundamentally, then sentimentally positive. 80 is a tall order. I've heard 75, Amit. 80 is a tall order, but maybe that should be positive. But you are only bullish on LTTS, nothing else within the IT space. Not even, I mean, the Tech Mahindra chat, even if you don't have an uh, investment here, any thoughts on the stock? I've not looked at Tech Mahindra. Okay. We're tracking TCS. Like, my team tracks TCS and enforces closely, but... Uh, I, I don't have like a very strong view. We're, we look at larger growth. Now we're so much into de defensives that we want to get. We're so much into, like, we, we, we got into de defensives a little earlier than most people. That saved us, to be honest. But now we're looking at stocks which can grow at 30% as well because we don't have stocks that are going to grow at 30, 40%. Like we do, our, our quarterly growth this quarter was 26% of our portfolio quarterly growth, but we're looking at higher growth rates now. Now is not the time to be like super defensive anymore. Okay, so maybe we'll talk about uh, those as well, Amit. Uh, it will be interesting to talk about some ideas. You know, just a couple of stocks in focus, stocks in news that we'll talk about with Amit Jaiswani a bit later on. One of them is Sun Pharma. Uh, maybe you could argue it's defensive in nature, but the space has been hammered. What does Amit make of that uh, forensic audit that has been announced? And Indiabus Housing Finance, and what about the constant spate of litigations that the stock is in? We'll talk about all of that. You are into consumption, Amit, in a big way. Is this forming a part of your portfolio? Uh, liquor and uh, distillery and brewery companies, any of them? We're looking at them very closely. We don't own them yet, but... Uh this looks good. United Spirits looks good. If you see how they have, uh, th what they have done in the last few years after taking over from Vijay Malia, it's incredible. Uh, they've already reached a thousand crores of operating cash flow. My bet is that they'll reach two and a half, three thousand crores of operating cash flows, or about thousand, fifteen hundred crores of profit in the next three, three and a half, four years. So this looks wonderful to me like I, I like what's happening in united spirits we're tracking this very closely uh, there are government problems here so uh, i don't understand if this is a b2c business or this is a b2g business because they end up selling to the government the pricing is decided by the government so that becomes a large problem only yesterday there was one more state which uh, uh, made like you ha had to sell all the alcohol to uh, to the government so that becomes a problem like in one shot itself they closed down 4,000 liquor shops and now the government will I think it was the South State I'm uh, forgot, forgetting the name uh, but uh, uh, yes, so uh, it, 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 the B2G or B2C, I don't understand that. That's the only thing which is stopping us because we're very clear on the financials where the business is growing, going, but uh, we get concerned that how much volatility is actually there that we're going to face in this stock. But it's a brilliant bet. You will not lose, uh, like you will make money here. This is what I think. Okay, a couple of quick answers, Amit, uh, on two stocks in news. One of them is Sun Pharma. Forensic audit ordered by SEBI for three years. Even if nothing comes out, sentimentally, do you think the stock will react? Yes, it can react, but uh, yeah, pharma, the price correction is largely over in some stocks, which I I'm seeing. I don't know about, uh, I'm not tracking Sun Pharma very closely. I know the other stock that you're going to ask is about India Bulls Housing Finance, so I'll just give you a heads up. In a financial company, the bet is always on the promoter. Do you trust the promoter? That's one question that you have to ask yourself. Because in a bull market, market will chase growth. In a bear market, market just chases quality. And with so many things around happening around these wholesale NBFCs, I don't think that anyone should, like, do you really trust the promoter? That's the first question. Financials aside, everything aside, that's the first question that you have to ask yourself when you're betting on a financial. So I don't know, like, this is this, like, we've never betted on India Bulls uh, group ever. Yeah, no, my question so, is slightly uh, different then. Uh, part of Amit, our my question is slightly different then. My question would be then, it'll slikely okay, start sorry, off lower sorry. today. No, no, not at all. You, you are right. I'm just tweaking it since you preempted it. If you had India Bulls finance, housing finance in your portfolio and it will start off lower today, arguably, would you still get it out? Would you still get out of that stock? I think yes. I, I like. I don't know. So, but uh, I, I, I do not trust the promoter so much to be invested in this thing. And for financials, no one understands what's there inside these books. And in bear market, these books come out and they take every penny away. So just be with the private financials. The opportunity is large. Go look at Bajaj Finance. I'm sure in three, four years, you'll recover all the money you lost. 
uh, in Bajaj Finance. So those are 100% retail plays. There is no one in India who's ever been able to make money from the corporate loan book. No one. See, RBL also was a good franchise, but he had 61%, 60% of his book was wholesale lending book. One, two, three, four NPAs and you're gone. You're, the stock's down 60%. That's a large wealth destruction. Look at only retail franchisees, uh, like in NBFCs, there are gold finance companies, one, one which is struggling right now, but, because, but this is a good opportunity to buy them. On, on, look at Kotak Bank, that is 70% retail. Look at HDFC, they have ne there are so many scams which have happened, CCD, every Cox and Kings, but w when was the last time you heard Kotak's name or HDFC Bank's name or Bajaj Finance's name in all these scams? They just don't come. But if you look at all scams, there are SBI is 100% there. I think they, or Yes Bank is 100% there. It just tells you what kind of book these guys have created. So I'm not against India Bulls housing finance. Like it's a good business if you look at it without sure. having a f promoter bias. But uh, point finances taken. are a bet on the promoter. Yeah, yeah point well taken. Amit, thanks for that. Uh, Amit, uh, uh, one word, uh, you, you refer to gold finance companies by any chance, any thoughts on Muthut Finance and this recent spate of comments that have come in, it, it puts a minority shareholder in a bit of a quandary, your advice would be appreciated. So my understanding is that if you can buy a 20-25% ROE company with 15% growth rate for, for next 5-7 years and if, if he keeps giving out 30% dividend payout. now if I know this is a little complex, so just give me one minute, Neeraj, please. But if you can, uh, uh, in a NBFC space, there are two kinds of NBFCs. There are one which is like Bajaj Finance, where ROE is less than growth rate. In that case, you will have to consistently dilute again and again. The second type of NBFCs, and there you bet that can this promoter dilute again and again, and that's where big money will be made. The second kind of NBFCs are like the ones of Mudud Finance, uh, where ROE is 25% and growth is 15%. So basically, you become like a cash machine company, and that is what Mudud Finance is. It is a cash machine, and it gives 30% as dividend payout ratio. So uh, and the leverage is just two and a half times. Uh, so in this dip, if you can get it around 2.2 times price to book. Uh, or around 540, 530 level, some, somewhere around that. I believe it's a great, great opportunity to get a 20% because your price to book will keep compounding at 18, 19%, 20%. So you you are virtually uh, not like you will get 18, 20% CAGR from these levels for a long, long time with 100% retail book. And it's pretty safe because you have dividend yield to protect you on the downside. Yeah, but I mean, Kerala is just 4% of the business, okay. even if half. No, no, that's Kerala that. is just four percent of the business. Even if half of that that business goes away, just two percent. So your growth will not be fifteen percent; it will be thirteen percent. So that's the only difference that will happen. So the markets will readjust itself. Okay, I'm I'm glad. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you: the, the impact of Kerala and, and, and nothing beyond that. But okay, I, I think you've uh, give, uh, given us some good advice. But thanks so much for joining in today and giving us your thoughts. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Neeraj. That's Amit Jaiswani with some Thank you, pretty interesting thoughts on, on Muthut Finance, uh, on some of the other companies that we spoke uh, earlier on as well.